have our very own Bree Lynn Howard here to present to you a TED Talk on Canada's commitment to tackling climate change. So, climate change. Apart, these two words are seemingly harmless, but put them together and we have a national crisis. We hear about the effects of climate change all the time. We listen to Ralph's scientists and world organizations telling us about temperatures rising and falling, sea levels increasing day by day, and people going missing in hurricanes and tsunamis. But what seems to be missing from this picture is what are we doing to prevent these problems and issues? What is the world doing? Today, my biggest question is, what is Canada doing? Well, the Canadian government has made the promise to be a greener nation. They are focusing extremely hard on reducing carbon action plans. Canada, in fact, has this long-term goal of reducing carbon intensity by 100% by the year 2100. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? But the Canadian government is staying optimistic and highly believe that this is achievable. So, what does that have in store for our future? Well, the first step is implementing a carbon tax. As most of you have probably heard, Kathleen Wynne is all about carbon tax. She announced that the province of Ontario would join Quebec and California in the Western Climate Change Initiative, Cap and Trade Market. So, what's Cap and Trade? I am not talking about trading in your Jays hat for a Cubs hat. No. I'm talking about charging large scale companies for the carbon that they produce. Canada is hoping by implementing the carbon tax, conserve new conservative ideas and the rebirth of reusable alternative resources is going to come through. And so far, it's been pretty promising in the West Coast. British Columbia in 2008 implemented a revenue neutral carbon tax. This ensures that whoever produces carbon pays for it. And their fuel emissions are down by 16%. Without the use of fossil fuels, Canada predicts that the future holds for a more electric lifestyle. The country plans to weed off of fossil fuels entirely and switch to solar and wind. But cars, they'll have to be battery operated and trains, planes, and other large scale transportation is gonna have to be fed by biofuel. Now, whether this biofuel comes from renewable food resources such as switchgrass or non-food resources such as algae, of course, not all Canadians can adapt to a greener lifestyle without giving up some of the luxuries of today. But with enough pressure, every single citizen can contribute. It's as easy as going down to the library and spending a whole two weeks on a reusable water bottle. That two weeks could potentially kill the disposable water bottle economy. If we were able to do that, Canada's emissions would reduce by 2.5 million tons a year. So come on, it's two dollars, and you can even stay in shape by walking to the water fountain. So somehow, we're all gonna have to come together to make this happen. We don't have a choice anymore. And Canada is so committed to the future generations of tomorrow that they have proposed a 17% decrease in carbon emissions by the year 2020. If you think about it, that's only four years away. But then again, Canada has made a lot of promises over the past couple of years. And actually, did you know that climate change wasn't even addressed until two decades ago? Only 20 years did we decide that it'd be a good idea to finally address greenhouse gas emissions. So why now? Why has it taken Canada 20 years to finally make such a big commitment? Over 20 years ago, the countries of the world came together to address environmental issues and problems and to create an action plan. Canada was a major player in 1992 when we first started to address carbon targets. In the world, we participated in the world's first agreement in 1997 in Kyoto, but we failed to follow through. So finally, just this past month in Paris, Canada has recommitted to this critical goal of drastically changing, reducing our carbon emissions. The objectives are to address global climate change and to also swear an oath that we will not let global temperatures rise above two degrees on average. Finally, Canada is getting somewhere. So most of you may be wondering, 
What happens if we fail to go through with this plan? Well, ultimately, if the rest of the world is able to reduce their emissions and stay true to the new COP Global Action Plan Treaty, then we are going to be the ones paying the price. No longer will Canada be able to trade amongst other countries, so why don't we start now? Go and buy a reusable water bottle, ride your bike to school, and for heaven's sake, do you really need to spend five cents on a plastic bag at the grocery store? Plant trees to help decarbonize the environment that you live in. Global warming is in our future. We do not realize the potential and the power that we have towards this issue. So it's going to be our generation that's going to have to grow up in the climate change straight in the face. So why don't we start now? Why not now? If we start now, then it's going to be a whole lot easier in the future. And I just want you to remember that it's our future.